Hello world, welcome to my podcast called Sounds from My Kunk Show. I am the Talking Wukayan, and this is episode one. Now let's get back into it. So today's date is February 5th, 2020, which means we are a few days removed from the Chiefs versus 49ers Super Bowl. And of course, as most of you probably know, Chiefs won a score of 31 to 20, I believe. Not as high scoring as most people thought it would have been. Um, The Chiefs definitely got off to a really slow start. Uh, Patrick Mahomes was probably having his worst game as a pro through three and a half-ish quarters. Um, 49ers were doing what they do. They ran the football. They... Didn't rely on Jimmy G too heavily until towards the end of the game, which some people may say, eh, that's what caused their downfall, but I don't believe so. I think Patrick Mahomes did what Patrick Mahomes does, took over the game, started throwing bombs, threw one to uh, Tyreek Hill, and Damian Williams, long touchdown run to ice the game at the end. And that's how it goes. I definitely thought through most of the game that Andy Reid would continue his streak as a head coach with the most wins without a Super Bowl championship as a head coach. Obviously, I think he won with the uh, Green Bay Packers. And I actually bet $2.99 that the Chiefs will win. So I'm happy that Patrick Mahomes was able to pull it out for me. That guy is such an exciting player to watch. And with the track team he has around him, hopefully they can keep this thing together for years to come. Um, Doesn't sound like it at the moment. I think Sammy Watkins seemed like he wanted to take a break from football. And even if he didn't, I'm sure the Chiefs would want to restructure his deal. He he actually had a pretty good game. He showed up (laughs) in the playoffs, uh, or actually he showed up in the Super Bowl, I should say, uh, with a very, very solid game. Uh, But I think Patrick is going into his fourth year after this, which means he has one more year, pretty low salary than his fifth year option. And then whenever, whatever his new contract would be in, I think most of us are going to agree. He's going to be one of those uh, $200 million quarterbacks. So the real question is what happens to the Chiefs as a team when they have to end up paying Pat, all of that money. In other quarterback news, what is this ridiculous notion that Tom Brady is going to entertain going to the Las Vegas Raiders? Now, I was also someone who didn't believe Colin Coward with his lebron meter saying that LeBron was going to leave Cleveland and go to L.A. to be with uh, Lonzo Ball. So, you know, what do I know? Just a guy. I honestly believe that Tom is going to return to New England for his final maybe two, two years, two seasons he'll, he'll stay. Um, he <laughs> bamboozled everyone with his Instagram posts, the black and white photo of him entering or leaving Gillette. No one could figure it out. Uh, but apparently it was just some ad for Hulu. I was played during the Super Bowl. He got us all. Good job, Tom. You won. You won this time. I actually think the best place for Tom would be for him to stay in New England. I could see him maybe going to the Chargers, going back to California. Um, I, I just don't see him becoming a Raider. There is also this this buzz about maybe the 49ers dropping Garoppolo and, you know, picking up Tom. And I think that one's a little far-fetched, too. I mean, Tom Brady's obviously the more seasoned, experienced, accomplished quarterback. But as for the 49ers, you know, you, you just made the Super Bowl with a young quarterback. Do you really want to cut him? Bring in Tom Brady, who has maybe two years max, in my opinion. Maybe get to another Super Bowl, maybe, and then be stuck 
after two years. I don't think it's worth it. Obviously, Jimmy G is not a force multiplier. Is I think I don't know if Eric Mangini, Coach Mangini, coined that term, but I don't view Jimmy G as a force multiplier. But he's definitely not, you know, a bottom tier quarterback. So I don't think it would be in the 49ers' best interest to cut him just to pick up Tom Brady. You're going to ruin your franchise for years to come unless there's some college quarterback coming out of the ranks, maybe a Trevor Lawrence type of guy. I think he, uh, he's going into his last year in school. Maybe they can get him, but I don't think it'd be worth it for the franchise to drop Jimmy G to pick up Tom Brady. As a Dolphins fan, anything that gets Tom Brady out of the AFC East would be ideal. Even if he ends up staying in the AFC, if he goes to Los Angeles or people have talked about him going to Indianapolis, which I don't think that one's going to happen either. But anything that gets him out of the AFC East would be ideal for all the Dolphins fans. In other quarterback news, Dak Prescott. Supposedly Dak is going to stay away from the team's facility until he gets a new deal. It was reported that uh, Cowboys are probably going to use the franchise tag on him, um, which I don't think is such a good idea. Well, obviously, now, once again, just a humble engineer. I'm not a football general manager, not a VP of player operations or an owner, anything of that nature, but if I had a guy that I drafted in the fourth round, he gets me two division titles. I think they made the playoffs, what, twice? He obviously led, well, didn't lead the league in passing. Jameis Winston <laughs> kind of took that title at the end of the year, but had some pretty good passing numbers. Did flop in the last game where we had a chance to make the playoffs. But four years, two division titles, some pretty good numbers. I drafted this kid, I think, or I, I think most people would, you know, would want to pay that guy, give him a long-term deal, and the Cowboys really messed up by not giving him that deal in his second year. That's when they really should have paid him, because any deal they would have given him then would have been a bargain by today's standards, but it's been reported, Dak Prescott is going to stay away the same facility until he gets his deal. I don't blame him. Played last year, on a final year, where he could have gotten injured. And if he'd gotten injured, of course, the Cowboys would have lowballed him. And it's just a just an odd situation. If you believe in the guy, why not pay him? Doesn't make sense to me. One thing that I totally forgot about the Super Bowl. One player. Terrell Suggs. Totally forgot that the Chiefs picked him up. Uh, congrats to him on getting his second Super Bowl ring, I believe. Not a lot of people can uh, say that. Sounds like he joined the uh, perfect team, perfect time. Not sure what he's going to do with uh, his career now. He's played, what, 16 years? If he wants to continue playing, so be it. I'll continue to watch if he hangs it up. Congrats to him on, on a career. I was scrolling through NFL.com and I noticed this article and I saw that Marvin Lewis is actually making his return to coaching. He's going to coach under uh, Coach Herm Edwards at Arizona State University. I think uh, Coach Herm actually got extended a couple weeks ago. He's uh, doing a pretty good job over there at, at ASU. It's good to see that Marvin's getting back into coaching. He did interview for the uh, Cowboys head coach coaching job, but I, I'm i going to assume that was more of a Rooney rule type of interview versus a, yeah, we really want to take a good look at you type of interview. I wasn't there, obviously, but that's just what it looks like. So congrats to Coach. Uh, he was obviously a coach for the Bengals for years, I think. He, since I had been watching football, he had been the Bengals coach up until about 2018, I think, is when he got let go. 
replaced by Zach Taylor. So, and obviously, not a super great track record. Uh, but before he got there, the Bengals were a complete dumpster fire. So, congrats to uh, Coach, and hopefully as a new DC of the ASU Sun Devils, hopefully they make a good run in the Pac-12. In non-NFL news, the XFL is actually scheduled to start play this Saturday. Unfortunately, I will not be able to watch because I will be at work. Clearly, I work too much. Work is getting in the way of me watching football. The Super Bowl was on when I was at work. The F- XFL kickoff is going to be when I'm at work. Ah, just sad. Which XFL team are you guys rooting for? I'm going to pledge my allegiance to the uh, Tampa Bay Vipers just because I live in Florida. I have no actual connections to Tampa Bay. Beautiful city. I love it. I've been there quite a few times, um, but no real connection there. Um, so, yeah, which XFL team are you guys excited to see? Let's see what else we have on the docket for today. UFC 247, the return of John Jones, if you want to call it a return. Not sure when his last fight was, but he's had quite a bit of a layoff. I think he's making his return against Dominic Reyes. Yes, he is fighting Dominic Reyes this Saturday. This card I'm not really that interested in. I think the only other person I'd want to see, and some people <laughs> are not big fans of, uh Lady MMA, female MMA, whatever you want to call it. But Valentina Shevchenko is an absolute beast. I'll be excited to watch her fight if I can stay up late enough. Um, We'll see how that goes. But yeah, man. Return of Johnny Bones Jones. I want to call him the uh, best fighter ever, but... Once you start failing drug tests, and your legacy gets called into question, and technically the guy's never been beaten. But then you have guys like George St. Pierre, who's arguably, in my opinion, and of course I have a little bias as a karate guy, I think that George St. Pierre is actually the, the greatest fighter that makes martial arts has ever seen. But John Bone Jones, really never, he's never actually lost. I mean, he has one loss in his record. I think it was a DQ for illegal elbows, but the guy has never been beaten, which is ridiculous in 26 fights. Absolutely ridiculous. But yeah, well, uh, I don't know if I'll be able to watch the fight. I think I have to work the day after once again. Work getting in the way of my sports life. My sports watching life, I should say. So I'll be excited to see the replay when I wake up and we'll see how that card goes. So my last topic for today, so far this podcast has been mostly, pretty much been mostly football. Um, I was going to say mostly sports, but I think UFC 247 was actually my first mention of anything that wasn't uh, football or American football related. Um, But the last thing I want to talk about about today is Tesla stock. Um, I, I, I don't know if you guys have been watching the news or if you guys do a little bit of investing yourself, but Tesla has, has, has had this meteoric rise over the last uh, few months. Uh, looking at it over the last three months, it's risen 172%. And I, I own a few shares Nothing major, um, but it's absolutely crazy the run it's going on. I don't know if it's because of, I think they released some reports a couple days ago, and I think they're having pretty good sales after being dogged last year about the company's performance. Um, so it's good to see that Tesla's uh, still moving strong, moving forward, and that's actually the reason I bought a couple shares. I thought they would dominate the electric vehicle market for years to come. So I bought in around 
two seventeen it looks like. Wish I had bought more shares. So much. But yeah, man, it's a meteoric rise. Uh, looks like it's actually starting to fall off a little after hours. I assume a lot of people are gonna lock in their profits, um, which is they're gonna sell their stock, which is gonna drive the price down. But um, yeah, man, happy to uh, reap the gains of Tesla stock, man. I saw a few days ago that Ford is actually releasing their own electric vehicle, the uh, a new Mustang. Um, not too bad looking of a car. Not really my type of taste. I don't, I'm not a big SUV guy. Um, I've always had a sedan. And I actually am trying to set a goal for myself. 2024, uh, going to sell my ICE vehicle, my gas-powered car, and we're going to buy a Tesla Model 3. That is the plan. So check back with me guys in four years and we'll see if we actually purchase that new Tesla. But I assume at that point in time there are going to be many more uh, competitors in the EV market for Tesla. So we'll see how that goes. All right, guys, I think that's going to do it for us today. Um, still not sure the frequency I want to uh, do these podcasts, uh, the length, topics all those kind of things. It's still up in the air. Um, But as of now, you're just going to hear my voice. I put in the description of my introduction video that my voice sounds boring, so monotone. Tried to change that, but after, you know, recording this, my voice still sounds the same. So take it or leave it. This is what my voice is, unfortunately, with my thick, terrible American accent. You're just going to have to deal with it. So thank you guys for tuning in. And see you in the next episode. Adios.